What is your foot pronation and how can you use this to reduce running injuries? Watch on to find out. Hey, how's it going? You're watching Iron Will, your place to find tips, tricks, and experience in triathlon, multi sport, and endurance events and training. Pronation is the term given to how your foot naturally rolls from side to side. When you're running, you put a lot of impact on your body, so it's very useful to know how your foot naturally lands so that you can make sure that you select the right shoe for you and so that you can change your running style if need be so that you can reduce injuries. If you get your pronation style wrong or completely ignore the whole idea of pronation you could be causing yourself foot injury ankle injury leg injury knee injury hip injury injuries all over your body so really take the time to get this right for example i supinate quite excessively so that's putting the weight on the outsides of my feet and for years i did nothing about it my first marathon, I did actually see a podiatrist, but I didn't really take their advice and I got shoes which were overcorrective in the wrong way. And that actually caused me to get runner's knee and IT band syndrome. Similarly, later on, I also went with corrective shoes in the wrong way and got IT band syndrome again. Take the time to get it right. You don't want to be getting IT band syndrome and other injuries. That sets you out from racing for way too long not worth it. But I finally managed to find a way for me to run effectively and safely. And that's led me to doing multiple marathons, Ironman, loads of other events, half Ironman as well. So many events without injury. So there are three main types of pronation. There's overpronation, supination, and neutral. Overpronation is the inwards foot roll. So where your heel is actually facing away from you, if this is my right leg, this would be overpronation. That's where, yeah, the inside of your foot rolls along the ground more than the outside of your foot. The outside of your foot may not even touch the ground. Running like this, of course, just looking at the leg, this will stretch the muscles on the inside of your knee and potentially shorten the muscles and connecting points on the outside of your knee. How can you tell if you overpronate? Well, if you were to look at your shoe, sorry, these shoes aren't very clean. It's kind of wet and muddy out here. If you were to look at your shoe and see that the wear on the inside of your shoe is more than the wear on the outside of your shoe, then you're most likely an overpronator. Also, if you were to look at a video of yourself running, so set a camera up in front of you and run towards it and then run away from it, you will see your um, feet actually rolling inwards a little bit. Management of overpronation can be a little bit tough. I'm not a podiatrist, so of course, I'm not going to be offering any specific advice. Um, this is all just personal opinion and from what I've read online. So it seems a lot of podiatrists will recommend for overpronation that you get a shoe that corrects the overpronation. So it'll actually roll your feet to more of a neutral position. This way you can reduce the load on the stretching on the inside of your knee and the shortening on the outside of your knee and have a much more neutral stride. Others may even recommend a minimal approach. So you go with minimal padding, minimal drop, that sort of thing, so that you can really work on the running style. But if you can, get yourself to a specialist. That's probably the best bet. So ideally a podiatrist or someone who specializes in running, um, then they can help you determine what shoe you need to get to help correct your overpronation so that you don't injure yourself. What is neutral? So neutral is normal. This is the sort of running style that you would hope that you would have. Uh, this is where your foot lands correctly down the middle of the shoe. Uh, you won't see a particular side of the shoe with more wear than the other side. Um, this is a good running style. It's considered normal. If you've got neutral pronation, then you're less likely to have injuries. Excellent work. Good for you. I wish I had neutral pronation. Anyway, and with neutral, of course, selecting a shoe, you probably want to go with a neutral shoe. So a shoe that doesn't have any sort of correction either way. Padding and drop is kind of up to you. If you want to go minimal, you can go minimal. If you want to go maximum, like with the Hoka's and that sort of thing, you can go maximum. 
whatever works for you, but you want to make sure that you don't cause yourself injury. So it's always worthwhile trying to figure out what is the best running style for you. Finally, what is supination? Well, supination is what I have. I am a supinator. Supination is where the outside of your shoe is going to be what's hitting the ground. So when you run, you'll typically land kind of like this and you'll run across the outside of your foot. And so opposing uh, overpronation, when you supinate, that will stretch the muscles on the outside of the knee and shorten the muscles and connections on the inside of the knee. How can you tell if you're a supinator? Well, as I mentioned, there will probably be wear on the outside of your shoe. But also if you were to look at a video of yourself running, I've done this plenty of times, you will see a massive tilt on your feet. For me it's massive, maybe for some other people it's not so massive. I do supinate quite excessively. So if you supinate, what sorts of shoes should you use? Well, that is also a little bit up for debate. So some people may suggest getting some sort of corrective shoe, although podiatrists I have talked to have recommended going a neutral shoe, especially for excessive supination. You don't really want to be overcorrecting supination too much. This can actually cause more injury. So for myself, the way that I corrected my supination was to actually look at my running style and really analyze how I run. So running, landing with my fore or mid foot. And I went to do that with minimal shoes. So this was actually one of the shoes that I've done a marathon in as absolutely nothing in it. Also quite commonly, and you'll see a lot of videos, I'll be wearing Vibram Five Fingers. Yes, those ugly toe shoes, but they are great since they're extremely neutral and they're extremely minimal. But I have also been known to run in regular shoes as well. For the Ironman I ran in regular shoes. These are what I ran the Ironman in. Um, they are neutral, so there's no correction either way. They do have a bit of padding, especially for those really long distances. But I have found that just running in regular shoes, I get more injuries. And I seem to get less injuries when I run in minimal shoes. So I run more in minimal shoes than in regular shoes. In regards to padding and drop, I personally recommend as minimal as possible. But then again, remember I am not a podiatrist. I'm not a specialist. I'm only going off my personal experience for my supination. So if you want better recommendations, definitely go see a podiatrist. They will be able to help you out. But I have found that with the minimal drop and with minimal shoes, I've been able to focus more on my running style. And I tend to heel strike less and land more under my center of gravity. Both of which I believe has helped stop me from getting running injuries. And really, in all cases, if you are getting running injuries, then you really need to analyze how you're running and what you're running with. Something needs to change. And whether you go see a podiatrist, as I recommend, or if you try and do your own self-analysis and self-evaluation by looking on Dr. Google and YouTube, then that's up to you. I have been having some issues lately with my knees, so I've gone back to minimal shoes to try and really just refocus on all of that. And also as part of my marathon coming up, I need to be running in Kung Fu slippers. These ones that I'm currently wearing right now, so practicing in them as much as possible. And what I found, especially when I was doing the Ironman, is I did have a lot of what felt like injuries, but they were actually just tightness. So tightness can be confused for injury a lot. So how did I fix this? Well, one of the best ways is uh, making sure that you warm up and warm down appropriately each time, making sure you stretch, uh, and especially the areas which are getting injuries, stretch those muscles and stretch the muscles around them, the ones that may affect that muscle group as well. Uh, also, foam roller. That thing hurts like hell, but is so amazing at releasing the muscles. So for IT band syndrome, I roll along the front of my thigh, whatever that muscle is on the front of the leg. Um, so I roll along the front there and roll along on a 45 and sometimes also roll along the IT band itself, although I've heard a bit of debate about that. And that has cleared up so many tightness 
related issues. Of course, what would be a little bit better than a foam roller is an actual sports massage. So if you can afford to do a sports massage once a month or something like that, then definitely go and do that. If you want to have, be you know, perfectly ready for race day, that will absolutely help. Ideally, if you're all loose and all good with your muscles, the foam roller shouldn't hurt. For me, it is excruciating, which means that I'm way too tight. I need to really loosen up those muscles. So I try and do it as often as I can. Have you had any running injuries related to how your feet land? Let us know in the comments section down below. To check out my video about my upcoming Guinness World Record title marathon event, I will leave a link up here. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.